Hello, this is Robert Capuccio. I'm here with industry Welcome presenter Michelle Delcourt. Michelle, how are you today? Good. It's nice and sunny. We're here at the Ideal World Conference in Los Angeles and we just did a seminar on biomechanics. I understand that your take on biomechanics is a little bit different. Now, one of the things that you've mentioned is there's no such thing, truly, as a lever in the bottle. Now, if I have a load and I'm holding it here, this is a lever, isn't it? So, how could you say a, a body built of levers doesn't have any true levers in it? Explain that first. Yeah, so what we're looking at is just in the realm of biomechanists, we're looking at how everything is kind of coming together in terms of relationships. So, if we define levers, as a physical lever, in this, you know, in this case the buildings that are around us, our body operates within a different construct. So when we think about physical levers as such, as we've learned them, we have to put it into a different context. So what we might think about is a biological system like you and I is built on a different premise than the buildings that are around us. So let me be clear, levers do not exist in the body, but leverage does. So if we think about doing a, a lateral raise, for instance, and we have the weight closer to us versus further away, we present a different leverage imposed on the body. But if we think about the body being set up as a series of levers, once we start to think about that, then it distorts how we interpret load. In other words, if we were built truly, Bobby, in a series of levers, it would be very economically expensive, and we would produce a lot of shearing force at the joints. So when we think about it, a lever typically has an access or pivot point, and then there's some sort of resistance and then some sort of force pushing it down. And depending on that arrangement, we've classified it as either a first, second, or third class lever. Now, if that was truly the case, we would have pivot points in the body, but the joints themselves don't have pivot points as such. They actually float, and their axes of rotation always change relative to the joint position. So to say that we have a clearly defined fulcrum is erroneous, it's not true, because these bones float in constant tension. And so the way to look at it right now may be best uh, applied to be, we are a series of links in the body that swim in constant tension. Let's and that's, explain that for a second. And that's called These tensegrity. bones float, tense tensegrity. Right. Explain the tensegrity model, what it is, and what it means to how we train so what it means, basically, by pure definition, is you have discontinuous elements in a tensegrity model surrounded by constant tension. So let me kind of break it down. If, if you have, let's say, compressive resistant members, so let's say bones in the body, you can't compress them, they kind of push things apart. But swimming in that is constant tension, muscle and fascia. A bicycle wheel is much the same way. The tension elements of a bicycle wheel are all the spokes. The compressive resistance numbers is the hub. And we know that in the hub, if it's compressing everything together and it's bound or it lives in synergy with all these little spokes, are, which are the tension elements, you and I know that when you blow one spoke, it's not long before another spoke blows because you start to distort the constant uh, arrangements in the system. In other words, this, the whole system breaks down because one link fails because there is a constant communication of tension between all the spokes. Our body is the same way. We swim in constant tension. If I change that tension element in one part of my body, the entire body as a body-wide structure changes. In other words, if your foot begins to collapse in one, in one foot versus another, body-wide you have a rotational distortion and that's echoed in through every segment of the body because every segment of the body communicates with this ubiquitous tension that we have in the body. So think of the body as constant tension, muscle and fascia, and discontinuous compression, our bones. So it's better served to say that our bones float in constant tension. What it means for us in training is we have to think about, assess, and coach relative to this. So we've got to see how one part of the body may affect another part of the body. And we've got to understand the working relationships of the body so that we can truly enhance uh, our programming and our application of, of exercises. Thank you, Michelle.